everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Aziza aka Zmed. If it's your first time stopping by, thank you so much for clicking this video. I am a second year medical student in the UK and I'm also a registered nurse. Today's video is going to be on how to ace first year of medical school. Literally, got every single tip you need to survive your first year and in fact to survive the rest of med school. I feel like I'm in a perfect position to tell you how to ace year one of medical school because I am fresh out of year one. I completely understand how curious and nervous you are right now to be starting medical school in the next few weeks. I mean, at least I felt like that. I was so curious, I was so nervous. I literally didn't know what to expect. I am by no means a perfect medical student. In fact, I'm not anywhere near the smartest medical student in my uni. I feel like I'm you know, I must have done something right because I passed first year and I'm now in second year and I passed all my assessments. So I must have done something right and that's why I feel like I'm in a position to make this video. Yeah. First year of medical school is not a walk in the park. Like, you know, compared to like other degrees where um, in your first year, you know, you it's, it's calm. First year is relaxing in a lot of other degrees. In medicine, you begin to feel the heat of medical school, I'm telling you, in the first month of medical school. I'm not even kidding. This isn't because medical school is particularly difficult or the content is too hard to understand or assimilate. It's just the fact that there is just too much information in medical school, literally, you just get bombarded with information and knowledge. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I'm sure by now you've had the analogy that the volume of information in medical school is equivalent to drinking from a fire hose. I completely agree with that. On top of keeping up to date with your content heavy lectures, you have essays to deal with, you have clinical placement, you have OSCEs. It's just a lot. Even though medical school is not a cakewalk, you won't be thrown at the deep end with a bucket loads of biochemistry to work out. In your first year, your medical school will ensure that you have your basics down, even if you haven't done biology at A levels. The basic stuff will be integrated with the degree level stuff. So even if you are a bit behind, you eventually catch up and you kind of cope. I personally didn't have a strong science background. I was never a science student in school. In fact, the only science subject I did in secondary school was biology. I never did chemistry, physics, and I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Prepare for your exams from the very first day of medical school. I am not kidding you guys. Medical school comes at you really fast. There is so much content to cover, so do not leave things to last minute. Cover all lectures in a timely fashion. Make sure you are on top of your lectures. Make your notes or flashcards, um, whatever works for you. Practice, active recall, repetitive learning. I personally would hugely, hugely recommend flashcards because they saved my life in first year. Um, but I've seen a lot of other students in my class that don't use flashcards and they're doing absolutely fine. So you just need to work out what works for you. You cannot know everything in medical school and you cannot cover every single thing. Of course, you want to keep up with every single lecture and every single seminar and every single information that's been given to you, which is fair. But don't be disheartened if you find out that you are not on top of things. And don't be heartbroken because things are going over your head or you're forgetting things. This is normal. You know, there's just too much information for the brain to, to deal with. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to remember everything. Make good use of lecture recordings provided to you. Not every medical school do lecture recordings, but my medical school does it. And I think it's literally like the best thing about my medical school well for me because I just feel like I learn more I study better if I'm listening to the lecture in my own space and in my own time and at my own pace as well so I can listen to the lectures you know in, in chunks and you know I can reduce the speed of the lecture if I want and I'm quite a slow learner so um I would rather listen to lectures more slowly and um, 
it assimilates more that way. So if your university does lecture recordings, I would definitely, definitely recommend you to make a good use of them and um, just try to listen to as much lectures as you can. So even though you've attended the lectures, it's always good to go back and listen to what the lecturer has said all over again in the lecture recordings because you will be surprised how much information you've missed even though you were like in the lecture. Make a good use of um, the opportunity of cadaveric dissection. So if your medical school does cadaveric dissection, I think you're very lucky. Um, my medical school does um, cadaveric dissection and this is something that I'm really, really grateful for. I'm even more grateful to the people, to the amazing people that have donated their bodies for our learning. So if your medical school does cadaveric dissection, I would advise you to make a good use of it. Don't be that medical student that sits at the end of the cadaver talking about anything other than that. Make sure you get your life together before you start medical school. Before you start medical school, make sure you have sorted out a lot of things that you have had outstanding in your life because, you know, when your life is organized, you generally just perform better at everything and you are less stressed as well. So I'm talking in terms of like admin stuff or like literally just random things that you've been procrastinating about for a long time. You definitely don't want to bring that over to, to medical school because medical school is just enough in itself. So if you've got anything that's been outstanding, just sort them out before you start medical school. If you need to apply for student loan, student finance, apply for it before you start medical school because for instance, if they're asking you for, for some certain document or if the application process is getting a bit stressful, this isn't something you want to be doing at the beginning of med school. You want to sort it out before you actually start med school. So apply for any loans that you need to apply for. If you want to apply for grants as well, make sure you apply for this before you actually start medical school. Manage your money wisely. Don't waste your money. Money is tight for you as a medical student, so you don't want to waste it. Don't buy unnecessary textbooks, expensive stethoscopes. In fact, when you start medical school, you will find lots of discount on textbooks and stethoscopes, especially at things like Fresh's Fair. Um, so it's important for you to be a bit patient and don't jump into buying things before you start med school. Don't jump into wasting money unnecessarily. In my medical school, um, we had one day of clinical skills every week. We covered things like how to take blood pressure manually, um, how to um, do different body, different body system assessments like the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, um, the gastrointestinal system. And for all of these, you definitely need a stethoscope. I really wouldn't recommend you spending lots of money on textbooks because you can always borrow them from the library. I mean, that's what they're there for. I would only buy a book if I find it really helpful. Or oh, there's such a huge demand for that book in the library that I can never get it out. And this is very rare. And if you do decide that you want to buy textbooks, don't waste your money on like expensive bookshops. I would advise you to go on the internet to purchase your textbooks. There are really good bargains available on the internet, on websites like Amazon, eBay. And if you're really smart and you're familiar with file sharing, you can even get lots of medical textbooks online for free. You definitely don't need to own a copy of an in-detailed embryology or um, respiratory physiology textbook or a book on abdominal surgical procedures because that's very specialised. And you can purchase a basic set of textbooks like anatomy textbooks, physiology, histology or even pharmacology because they're very they're broad spectrum and you know they cover a wide range of things and they're not very specialized and you can always use them throughout your degree and even after your degree and these broad spectrum textbooks um they tend to be bigger as well so um in most cases they're not easy to get in and out of the library regularly so it's kind of a good idea to Purchase them and keep in your room if you desperately want to purchase textbooks. Enjoy medical school. You're going to have to work super, super hard in medical school, but you need to take some time out to smell the roses. Socialize with non-medics. 
Although I would definitely, definitely recommend for you to leave with medics at least one or two um, when you're choosing accommodation of who to leave with. I definitely, I definitely think it's a good idea to leave with medics, but I also think it's equally important for you to socialize and have non-medic friends. Be prepared to grow up quickly as a medical student. You need to be prepared to mature pretty quickly than other students. You will have more responsibilities than most of like other students studying other subjects. And you, generally, your lifestyle as a medical student would just be a case of, you know, work hard, play hard. And that's something you need to be aware of before you start medical school. About fitness to practice. It is definitely true that medical students cannot do a lot of things that other students in other courses would get away with. If you do anything that is um, unacceptable, your medical school would not only have to do their own fitness to pra practice investigation on you, they will also um, have to inform the general medical council. However, I still think a few myths need to be dispelled. As a medical student, it's absolutely okay if you go out and party all night and get wasted, that's on you, that is fine. As a medical student, it's absolutely fine for you to express your political opinions and in fact, it's okay for your opinions to be incorrect. As a medical student, you can dress however you wish and however you feel comfortable in dressing outside of professional practice or outside of practice hours. And bear in mind, practice hours includes your time at university. So um, as long as your mode of dressing, it's not a civil or, you know, a, a criminal offence and it's all right, you can wear absolutely whatever you want. A lot of other students studying other courses might be able to get away with petty public offences because they don't have a professional body such as the GMC to, to answer to. As a medical student, if something is illegal, you cannot get away with it. If something is illegal and you get caught, you cannot get off the oak. To be honest, we shouldn't be doing anything illegal in the first place. Whether you're a medical student or you're studying any, any other course, I hope you wouldn't be doing anything illegal. Medical school, there's no need for suits and ties, you know, but wearing a see-through top without an underwear wouldn't go down well for girls. And wearing a jean that exposes your buttocks wouldn't go down well for boys either. Anything that a qualified doctor would get in trouble for, you can get in trouble for it as well as a medical student. Things like violating confidentiality, pretending to be a doctor, or um, performing a procedure on the patient um, unconsented, these are the sort of things that can get you in trouble as a medical student. And, you know, these are the sort of things that can get you into um, fitness to practice um, problems. So it is important that as a medical student on placement, you dress professionally and you behave professionally. If you want patients to respect you, then you need to be respectable. I definitely believe in tidy appearance, tidy mind. And even if that doesn't make you feel or hack professionally, which in most cases it does. At least it makes the patient feel, you know, confident that they're talking to a professional. It reassures the patient that they're confiding in someone competent, professional, and trustworthy. You want to learn how to avoid distractions when you're eating the books. When you're studying, no texting, no messaging, no phone calls, no social media, anything that would help you to get a passing grade, it shouldn't be around you when you're studying. This is something that I'm still struggling with um, as a content creator and as a social media person. Um, this is something that I still struggle with because there's always something for me to look at. On my phone, there's always a text message for me to, 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 to see. There's always a DM for me to read. And there's always something interesting for me to watch. So this is something that I'm still working on myself. But um, in year one, I did use an application called Flicked, um, which is an application that sort of locks my phone off distractions like social media, text messages. It's a free application. There's a lot of um, applications like that that can just help you increase your level of productivity. So this is something you can look up on Google. That definitely really helped me because like when I set a target to study for four hours um, using the fleet application, I wouldn't be able to access my phone or receive a text message 
throughout that four hours period. So that was something that really helped me to stay focused and avoid distractions. To always seek for help in medical school. If you're feeling overwhelmed, whether with um, social issues, academic issues, financial issues, um, or you're just struggling to settle in med school generally, there's always someone to speak to. You will have a personal tutor, an academic tutor, you will also have the student support, so lots of, lots of shoulders to lean on. Be cautious of the sort of advice that you take from people. I know this is a bit funny because I'm currently giving you advice. In the end, I will suggest that you take in everything for what it is and you take out what is going to work for you from the advice that I'm giving and from any advice that anyone else gives you about medical school. Because at the end of the day, all the advice that you hear from people is what works for them, is what works for an individual. It doesn't mean that's what is going to work for everybody. So um, take every advice for what they are and then you, you take out what you want to take out of it, if that makes sense. So um, you don't have to taking every single thing that everyone tells you about medical school or every single thing that even your classmates tells you about medical school. If he's working for you, fantastic. But if something is not working for you, just leave it and, you know, try something else. Once you find out something that works for you, stick to it by all means and don't second guess yourself. My final tip is for you to believe in yourself and never compare yourself to anybody in medical school. And I can't believe this is me actually saying this now because this is something I've personally suffered from in the past. I was that person that would always compare myself to other people. I would always look at what other people are doing and then I always felt like, you know, I was like the dumbest in the room or um, everyone else is doing better than me. But now I am definitely in a better place and I am more aware of the dangers of comparing yourself to other people. Honestly, comparing yourself to other people is the biggest, biggest anxiety inducer in medical school. For example, your classmates can be rambling about a new research about a particular condition, say emphysema, and listing 20 different facts about it, of which he or she only knows that information because they've been doing an extensive research about the topic. And in most cases, none of that information is relevant for your level of study. If you're not careful, you can easily feel like they're better than you or you're slacking when actually you're not. By the end of the first year of medical school, you'll be amazed of how much you have actually accomplished. Embrace each and every experience that you have in medical school and don't take anything for granted. March confidently, be thirsty for knowledge and be rest assured that you have everything it takes to become a doctor because if you don't, you wouldn't be in medical school in the first place. And never forget that you're not just a future doctor, you're not just a medical student, you're a human being. I really, really do hope that all the tips that I've given in this video will help you. Good luck with medical school. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the like button so I can know you like this video if you do. 